Greetings and salutations folks and welcome once again as always to another helping of Mr H's Hot Pot. You join me today for day 9 of the UK lockdown where currently I'm out and about taking my daily exercise. It's about half past 10 in the morning as I'm making this film Hot Potters. Very late for me, normally by now I'd be editing the video up. But this morning I got up a little bit later and there was a combination of two reasons. First of all my little son, Toby James, he had a second bad night sleeping. Big thank you to everybody out there who's shown concern and offered you well wishes and things like that. I think it's a basically a combination of two things with Toby at present. Number one, his normal routine's gone to cock because of all this. But we moved the clocks forward, didn't we, on Sunday. And kids do normally go through a thing known as sleep regression, so... I'm not too worried at present. Anybody out there who's had small children will know that children do alter the sleep patterns as they develop. So I'm not too worried about that. The second reason, as this video is being made a little bit later, is when I did wake up, I noticed that it was a bit grey outside, a bit overcast and a little bit damp. So I held off a little bit. I kept my powder dry because I thought, is it going to rain? I'll see how it progresses. Luckily, it hasn't. Although... It's still a little bit chilly out here. Very, very different from a week ago when I was wandering around the countryside with just a t-shirt on, not a cloud in the sky, and blue skies. It was gorgeous, wasn't it? Just shows you in Britain how quickly the weather can change. We have very crazy weather, don't we, in this country? Anyway, folks, on to day nine, and uh, what day nine's bringing. Well, I think most of us now are fighting the old boredom thing, aren't we? You know, we've, uh, the novelty's well and truly worn off and we just want this period to end. Now what I'm going to try and do moving forward with these vlogs is I'm going to try and return to my roots a little bit. Anybody who watches Mr H's Hot Pot channel will know that this isn't my normal shitake. This isn't what I normally do. What I normally do is go out and I'll, uh, I'll film things from our industrial past and our industrial heritage. I really enjoy doing that sort of thing, as well as following things that Fred Dibner did and George Formby and things like that. That's why I call this channel Mr H's Hot Pot, because traditionally an hot pot is made up of lots of different things, and that's what this channel's made up of, so that's why I call it Mr H's Hot Pot. So, yeah, I'm going to try and return back to my roots a little bit. This area, as I'm taking my exercise in, Although it uh, gives the impression of being the countryside, it's really reclaimed industrial land. Right up until about the 1970s, there was a lot of mining took place around where I'm currently walking. There was lots of little railway lines and things like that. Now, they've redeveloped it since then, you know, and they've returned it back to nature, and they've done a fantastic job. But... There's still one or two little hidden relics from the industrial past around this area. So what I'm going to try and make it my mission to do, mainly for my, my own uh, purpose, you know, so I've got something to head for, I'm going to try and seek out one of these little relics each and every day whilst this lockdown period is continuing because it looks like it will be extended if we're to follow Italy's example. Yesterday they extended those for a further fortnight, didn't they? So... Assuming that we do the same, I'm going to try to seek out one of these little relics or little things, little curiosities that's been left behind each and every day and feature it at the end of uh, my vlog. Hopefully that'll keep things mixed up a little bit and I'll still be able to keep contact with the channel's roots rather than moving down a vlog type of channel. Unfortunately, like many other YouTubers, this is all we can do at present. We're not able to go very far from home. And all we can do to continue putting output there is talk about the one and big subject that's on each and everybody's lips at present, which is this current Canova virus outbreak. So, folks, like I say, I hope you're keeping your spirits up. You know, I'm, uh, I'm trying to keep mine up. But I must admit, one of the things that I'm currently worried about, which is the white elephant, I think, in the room for many people is one's employment status. You know, I'm uh, worried that when all this is over with, will I still have a job to go back to? 
because I, like many others, have been deemed by the government that our job is non-essential. And as we can't do it from home, because it's a physical, manual type of job, we've been told, you know, stay at home until this outbreak, you know, it's eased off. But you do have to worry, is there going to be a job for us when all this is over? Because many companies now are having to lay people off for no other reason than they can't afford to continue paying wages and having people sat at home. That's just basic business. The company's not generating income. There is no business, is there? It won't be long before the they hit the skids and they end up in liquidation. So people are worried that if we don't get out there and we don't get things back to normal, I could find myself out of a job. And many people out there are going about and they're scrambling for work, especially people in the, say, the building trade. You know, you see them tipping up and they're just trying to make, make a book because although the Chancellor has said he'll underwrite 80% of employees' wages, it takes time for it to filter down, doesn't it? Meanwhile, people, if they've not got savings, they've still got bills to pay, they've still got food to put on the table. It's just one great big mess. You know, and I do feel for people who have been made redundant and are about to be made redundant because it's a very worrying time. Very worrying time indeed. Whilst the government might say your job's not essential, certainly the wages that you receive at the end of each and every month, those are essential. So, folks, like I say, my, my, uh, my thoughts are with everybody who's, who's in that position because it's certainly a white elephant in the room for Mr H. Anyway, putting that aside, some of the ideas that are coming out from people to uh, keep spirits up, they're very uh, ingenious. They're very ingenious. My good friend Mike, who featured in one of my Fred Dimner films, I said one of them, it was actually two, I split it up and part one and part two. He, uh, he's come up with a rather novel idea for his family to set a challenge. And what they're going to do, they're going to watch each and every Disney film that was ever made in order of the year it was released. That's some challenge, that, Mike. Some out there would say that would be a pleasure, and uh, others will say it'll be a punishment. But good luck with your challenge, anyway. Has anybody out there come up with any other ideas like that? Any novel ideas? What have you seen out there? Now, what I'm doing at the moment, I'm currently undertaking a little bit of a a little bit of a, a project. I bought a little scooter for my son. One of these that you push along with uh, just one of your, you know, one foot on and two wheels at the back, one at the front, that type of thing. And I bought it from Aldi ages back. And it was one of the last ones, so I got it for a father. I got a bargain with that one. But when I got it home and I opened it up, and I know this isn't very politically correct what I'm going to say now, but uh, it was a little bit girly, for want of a better phrase. I'll probably get this video pulled now because I've said that. But, um, yeah, there was, there's flowers on it and stuff, so I've had to strip that off and pimp it and, you know, boyify it a little bit. I suppose I could, you could also say I've made it unique in doing that, but I'm currently doing that. And why is it with these things as you buy from, like, Aldi and that? And you get these little things and it says, no tools required. You don't need any tools. And you always end up having to get a spanner or a screwdriver or something, don't you? Because the tools that they give you, they're the bloody crap. So that's currently what I'm doing, you know, doing that. And uh, I have managed to catch up on one or two little jobs. Not many. I have done a bit of a, a little half-hearted attempt at them. But I'm trying to hold off for a rainy day. Because when the rain sets in, that's when the boredom really will kick in. But yeah, that's what I'm kind of trying to do to keep the boredom at bay. Right then, folks, we're now coming up to 10 minutes, and as everybody knows, I try to keep these vlogs to a 10-minute mark. I'm not always dead on. It's not to the second. I don't have a schedule to keep like the bloody BBC, but uh, I do try and keep it around that 10-minute mark because I personally, myself, don't like watching vlogs that rabble on and on and on and on. You lose, But you lose interest, don't you, if it goes on for too long. So I'm going to wrap it this one up. Please leave your comments below what you think about my idea regarding going round and trying to feature a 
little relic from this area and uh, featuring it at the end of each and every video. And as always, leave your comments about the current situation. So folks, until the next time, stay safe and as always, bye bye for now.